Okay, 12 o'clock straight up. We will go ahead and get started. Um, thank you again, everyone. Welcome to our year-end webinar. Um, I'm Laura Ladd from Mosaic Consulting Group, um, and we appreciate you joining us today. Um, as many of you know, year-end is a complex process with a lot of moving parts and one of the busiest times of year for finance, HR, and payroll teams. We have worked with clients across the spectrum to help make this process seamless and have some best practices from our experience to share. So unlike this fellow in the picture here, you guys do not need a crystal ball to get through year end. We are here to help you. Our presenter today is Amy Morgan, Premier, Consult excuse me, Premier Support Consultant. Amy has two decades of HR and payroll experience with corporations of all sizes. She's an expert in the areas of UTA, UTM, payroll, tax reconciliations and adjustments, open enrollment and life events, and mass imports. Um, Amy works with her clients on a variety of projects throughout the year, but her payroll experience gives her added insight into events such as year-end, W-2 and W-2C creation. She also has a great deal of experience in open enrollment, life events, ACA reporting, and business intelligence reporting, so you guys are in very good hands today. Today we are going to cover what is year-end, Multipro year-end, the gateway and checklist, new features in Multipro, and Mosaic's year-end offerings. Before I turn it over to Amy, I just want to cover a few housekeeping notes. We will send all of you a link to this webinar recording along with a copy of the presentation and a link to our year-end blog, which is on our Mosaic website at the conclusion of this webinar. We will also include time at the end for your questions, but if at any time during the presentation you have a question, you can ping me using the chat box at the bottom center of the screen, which is the icon right in the middle that looks like a conversation bubble. You can just type in your question and we'll pause and make sure that we address it for you. And now I'll turn things over to Amy. Good morning, everybody. Afternoon for some of us. So, there we go. Um, so what is your end? Um, and other stuff. <laughs> we are getting close to the end of the year here. So year end means a lot of different things to different people. Um, specifically to the people that are likely to be on this call. If you're in here, human resources, normally you're getting ready for your new benefit year. You're in the middle of open enrollment. Um, you're reviewing your policies to make sure they're going to be in compliance with any new laws that are coming across beyond January 1st. You've got a lot of last minute questions from your employees about their benefits for this year, the benefits for next year, and oh, by the way, how much PTO time do I have left and can I get that paid out? Um, if you're in finance, year end is when you're closing your annual accounting periods, you're finalizing your transactions, um, reporting your financial performance, you know, looking at your general ledger and seeing if you need to close out some accounts and, and write some stuff off. And then if you're in payroll, year end is the culmination of everything you've done all year. There's a lot of processes you do at year end. You only do once a year. This is your last chance to find and fix issues from the current year before they become very complicated to fix. Um, you know, the employees who moved without telling anybody, people who were overpaid or they were underpaid and somebody just noticed or we had duplicated employee records and once again, they just noticed it's the middle of November. Oh my God, how am I going to get this fixed? In short, end of year is very hectic for payroll people. I remember back in my client side days when I was a payroll manager, we had a new controller. We had the first meeting of the, the quarter. Quarter one was over, we had a meeting, he's going around the table, accounts payable, accounts receivable, where are you for, for quarter end? He's like, okay, payroll, and I said, quarter ends like month end, it's already done. Second quarter comes around, same meeting, he gets to me and I'm like, quarter end is like month end, I'm already done. Third quarter, you know where this is going, quarter end is like month end, I'm already done. And then he's like, great, 
we've got a whole bunch of projects that need to be done. And since you don't have anything to do for, for the fourth quarter end, I'm going to give them all to you. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, back up. Year end is not quarter end. He didn't understand it. I finally ended up handing him this nice thick binder, the training from Ulti Pro, all of my checklists, all of my handwritten notes, how to do year end. And then I think he got it because he didn't give me any projects for fourth quarter, um, which is good. <laughs> so when do you start working on year end? Honestly, if the first thought you gave to year end was when you logged into this webinar today, you're behind the curve. The time to really start thinking about year end is when you finish the previous year's year end. Um, but don't worry. We can get you back on track, back up to speed. It doesn't mean your year end is ruined. We're, we're going to get you there. It's not a problem. Your first step for year end is identifying your team, the people who are going to, you're going to rely on to complete all of the different tasks that make up year end. If you're lucky, your team consists of someone from the payroll department, someone from the tax department, someone from HR, someone from finance, someone from IT, maybe even someone from the mailroom so you know that the W-2s are going to get mailed out on time. You might be a team of one. You get to do all of that yourself. You're still going to have a couple of people you rely on. Um, maybe the mailroom just needs to be warned, hey, I'm dropping off 2,000 W-2s on the 30th of January. They need to be out by the next day. Um, you know, either way, you're going to get it done. It's not a problem. It can be done. It's not insurmountable. And we've got your back. If you need help with any of this, whether you're a team of 20 or a team of one, this is what we're here for, all of us. Um, but you want to make sure everybody who's on your team knows they're on your team. You need to make sure they know what you need them to do and when the deadline is. Communication is the key. Um, when do you want to start communicating with your team? Now? <laughs> so a lot of that's going to depend. If this is your 10th year end and you've had the same people working on it, just a quick email. Hey, don't forget year end. Let's have a meeting next week and start planning everything out. If it's your first one or if you've got a bunch of new people, um, and by first one, I mean first year end with Ulti Pro, obviously not first year end ever. Although in that case, once again, you want to have that meeting soon. You know, Bob, I, I'm going to need you to go through all of these tax files and make sure they're okay. Joe, you need to make sure the mailroom knows that they've got all this stuff done. Make sure they know what's going on. Get them started. Hey, Amy. Yes. May I jump in for a minute? Sure. Uh, you're talking about other team members, other departments. When, in general, do you need to give them a heads up? Because I know all these other departments have their own work that they are doing in addition to their role on your end. How much notice do you recommend? Um, so once again, if it's a new team, as much notice as possible. Um, if you haven't done it yet, reach out to them today. Excuse me, let them know, hey, this is coming down the road. Um, we're going to get a little further. I'm going to start talking about timelines. Once you have a solid timeline for when things are done, that is the, that's the time to really have your sit-down meeting. Okay, Bob, this is your deadline. Joe, this is your deadline. Um, but definitely now is the time to be reaching out, making sure everybody knows you're going to be counting on them to do something. And remember when I said you should start planning for year-end as soon as you finish year-end? Put this on your calendar now. Schedule a post-mortem meeting for late January to early February and go everything that go over everything that went wrong on year end. Deadlines that were missed, the printer jammed, you didn't order enough W2s, whatever. Put it all on there, everything that went right. Let's get all of that written out. The purpose of this meeting is not finger pointing. If you come out of this meeting, know that Bob, knowing that Bob's the one who screwed up and it's all his fault and you didn't do the meeting right. The whole point of the meeting is to say, these were things that happened. This is what we need to do. 
next year, later this year, to make sure they don't happen again. You've got 10 months after you have this postmortem, you've got 10 months to prepare for the next year, and there's a whole bunch of stuff you can be doing on a regular basis to minimize the impact of other people's mistakes. Hey, Amy. Yes. May I jump in one more time? Sure. Uh, any best practices from your work with clients over the years or bumps in the road that you can share that are common or even not so common that have come up in these meetings? Yeah, so the, the usual bumps in the road, um, you have employees who move and their taxes aren't changed, um, especially if you're in a state like Pennsylvania where you've got local taxes to deal with or you've got people crossing state lines. There are BI reports and workflows that can be set up that you can track these and make sure that the person responsible for updating someone's taxes knows when that someone moves so the taxes can be updated. Um, another one that is usually very difficult is when you have an overpayment to an employee, and I'm not talking, you know, two hours or 20 bucks. I, I actually had an employee who was overpaid by, oh, about 250 hours on a single paycheck. Um, that has to be recouped, and you've got to figure out how you're going to recoup it. So not only does the company get their money back, which is important, but the employee's paycheck looks correct. You know, if you overpaid somebody by $10,000, when you get that money back, their W-2 should not still show that $10,000. Their taxes should not show for that $10,000. So one thing to do is, is make sure you've got two sets of eyes. Now, obviously, you should have them for the payroll process. You should have checks and balances there. But when there's an overpayment that needs to be recouped, make sure there are two people who are aware of what's going on and how it's going to be done. So you're checking each other's work to make sure it's done right. They can be very tricky. Um, another one is one of my favorites is the blocked versus exempt on taxes. And UltiPro uses them a little weird. Um, one of them means that I don't think I'm gonna owe Uncle Sam any money at the end of the year, so you just don't take any out of my paycheck. My W-2 is still gonna show my earnings. The other one is, I'm not gonna owe Uncle Sam any money, and I'm not gonna be subject to any of Uncle Sam's tax laws. Don't even report my earnings on the W-2. Those tend to be people here on visas. If you don't have foreign employees or U.S. employees working as expats in other countries, you probably don't have any of these. You shouldn't have anybody marked as block taxes. So you want to check for these. There are BI reports that can be run to look at this. Once a month is probably fine. Um, unless you have people who have a tendency to hit the button wrong, then you might want to do it more often. And the last one is new locations not being set up correctly or not being set up in their entirety. Um, once again, casting back to my days as a payroll manager, it wasn't unusual for me to get an email the day I opened payroll saying, hey, we just hired Hillary, um, and for some reason I can't get her in the system, I can't put her address in as Alaska. Why not? Well, because we're not registered to do business in Alaska. I don't have Alaska taxes set up. Oh, well, she started three weeks ago. Okay. So in that case, I've got to go into AltiPro and set up Alaska so I can pay Hillary. But then I also have to go to Alaska and register for those taxes and then update AltiPro. And that can be a problem if you don't get everything synced properly, especially when they hire Hillary at the end of the year. Um, so there are BI reports on this and also a second set of eyes, double checking to make sure things are done. Um, so now let's consider what does UltiPro give you for year end. Um, the good news is they have a couple of really good tools to help you with year end. They've got some that they didn't have back when I was doing this. And uh, you are not just getting an email from them at the end, end of December saying, hey, don't forget, Tomorrow is the last day of the year. I hope you got everything done. 
So if you are a mid-market client and UltiPro files your payroll taxes for you, you can turn on the year-end gateway in UltiPro. Um, this is under administration year-end. You can provide access to this to everybody on your team and then to your boss so he can look and make sure that you're doing your work. If you don't see year-end gateway and you think you should see year-end gateway, have whoever's in charge of security go out and make sure you've got access. This may be one of those things that has to be turned on for you. If it's still not there, you may not meet the qualifications. Open a ticket. Ask UltiPro, hey, where's my gateway? It should be there if you think it should be there. Um, so what is the year-end gateway? It is an online checklist. It is held within UltiPro, within the core product. Um, and as you can see, <laughs> as I have my mouse grabbed on my screenshot there, you've got your checklist and each one of those five items drops to additional items. And then you have a due date. And yes, my screenshot shows 2017 because when I grabbed these, 2018 wasn't in there yet. The due dates change color when they've passed. It'll turn red the day after it's passed. Um, so it's a good visual where you are and what needs to be done. And then when you open each item, you have the individual items. And if you, if you can see on this, hopefully you can read this slide pretty well. Um, for instance, the first one talks about the company setup standard report. That's a link. If you click there, it will take you to that report. You don't have to try to remember where that report is. Just click on the link. It takes you there. It's fabulous. Um, there are a couple that take you to a business rule. If you don't have access to the business rule, it's not going to do anything. Then just, and, yes. Sorry. Amy, we have a question. Um, employees on visas should be exempt from taxes and other employees should be blocked from tax, correct? So, and I'm going to have to apologize. I get these two backwards because UltiPro uses them weird. One of them reports the earnings on the W-2 and does not withhold taxes. The other one does not report the earnings on the W-2 and does not withhold taxes. So typically on visas, you're not reporting the earnings on a W-2 and you're not withholding taxes. Um, other employees would claim on the W-2, I'm sorry, not the W, on the W-4 form, it says exempt, which means UltiPro calls it blocked. Um, and that means I'm reporting the taxes, but I'm not having anything withheld. I'm reporting the wages, but I'm not having anything withheld from my taxes. Does that make sense? I Smile. believe so. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yes, we got a thumbs up. All right. Fabulous. Um, so... What slide am I on? I'm on slide 10, sorry. So it walks you step to step. It tells you what reports you need. It gives you a link. Um, as an added bonus, when you complete the task, it's marked as complete. So when Bob needs to come in and do a task, he can see what's been done. Or you can go out and say, hey, Bob, you were supposed to do that. It's not marked as complete. Either mark it or do it. And once again, your boss can look and see where you are on things. Um, I want to pop back really fast and point out, as you see on the screen, these items are not necessarily in order. The third item has the same due date as the first item. So you kind of want to keep, look at these. Don't just figure you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and you're done. So you'll want to look at those and make sure you've got your plan. Okay. So what's next? If you, if the gateway is not available to you, which means you're an enterprise user or somebody else files your taxes, either in-house or another party. Um, UltiPro provides a handy-dandy checklist that you can use. It looks all pretty. You can see the first page there, and this actually has the 2018 dates. Um, but it comes out, it's, it's an Excel spreadsheet, so you'll have a tab for each month. It tells you what you need to do. Um, so the link you'll see on that screen is there. This will be part of the, 
package we send out to everybody after the, uh, the webinar is finished. If you're eager and you absolutely have to do this right now, then just go ahead out to the uh, customer success portal and search for 2018 year end checklist and it's there. Um, so while this is not as interactive as the year end gateway, you do kind of print it out and everybody's got a copy and maybe you've got a master as you're checking things off. It does tell you the tasks that you need to do in the sequence they need to be done in. And it gives you the pathways or the, the breadcrumb trails for finding the reports that you need in core on the web to run these reports. Um, one warning, if you don't use AltiPro to do your tax filing, your tax filing either department or company is going to have their own set of checklists and deadlines and you kind of want to make sure you are matched up there. It's no good to have all of your year-end stuff done in AltiPro and then suddenly have your tax provider go, yeah, I needed to have this three weeks ago. So merge your checklists if you need to. Um, so that was my very high level year end. Now we're going to talk about what is new in AltiPro. As soon as my slides catch up with me, there they go. What is new in AltiPro? We have uh, three features that were rolled out this year. We're going to make life easier for you, not just year end, but Frankly, a lot of it's going to be good for you all year, but it all came out recently, so I'm counting it as year-end features. So let's take a look at them. The first one is reversals and adjustments in the web. If you've ever had one of those cases where Bob comes up to you in November and says, hey, I moved from Ohio to Florida in June, and I'm still having Ohio taxes taken out. How do I fix this? Well, I have to go in and reverse all of his checks back to when he moved and put them back in again. So they're being taxed in Florida or not taxed as the case may be. Um, reversals and adjustments are basically, they're my bread and butter at the end of the year, starting in October and running usually until February. I normally have a bunch of these. Um, and it was the same way when I was client side because people would move and not tell you. But the really nice thing is for the longest time you had to do them in the back office. It was the only way to get them done. If you're a mid-market employee, uh, client, that means either opening a tick with AltiPro and hoping they got to you or calling your friendly neighborhood mosaic consultant and having them take care of it for you. Even if you're enterprise, a lot of companies only have a few people with back office access, and those tend to be your higher priority, higher ranking employees. So now you're taking your payroll director or your HR director and making them do these things because they've got access and you don't. Yeah, guess what? We just changed that. So now we can do them in the web. It's done through the payroll gateway. If it's turned on, you will see under things I can do, manage adjustments, and then under manage adjustments, you'll be able to do reversing entries. Here's the really nice thing if you've ever done these in the back office. The back office allowed you to do this quarter, last quarter, or last year. If you had something from two quarters ago, say first quarter, 2018, you did it in, so you were in fourth quarter now, so you would do it in third quarter 2018 and open a ticket for ultimate to push that back to the first quarter where it belonged. In the web, all four quarters of 2018 are available, plus last year, fourth quarter of 2017. So much better, much nicer, much cleaner. You can get as much of this done as you can before you have to open that ticket. Because trust me, you're busy year end, we're busy year end, AltiPro's busy year end. Um, and then once again, you can do these in the web, that doesn't mean you have to. If you're not comfortable, if you have a whole bunch of them, 
If you really just want to go Christmas shopping and don't want to do them, call us. This is what we do. We're more than happy to take care of these for you. I enjoy them, but I'm weird. So the next thing we have is web imports. Once again, for the longest time, if you needed to do a file import, it was done in the back office. Once again, call your consultant, open a ticket, or those one or two high ranking people who have back office access have to do the import for you. Now you don't have to do it that way. You can give more people access to import files. You can actually import into fields that you cannot import into in back office. If you have any platform configuration fields, we can do imports in the web. Um, these are fabulous. They allow your, your directors and such to focus on their tasks while the HR generalists are uploading new PTO balances and your payroll admins are uploading everybody's new Christmas club elections. It's fabulous. Um, they're a little tricky, but I think once you've done one, you'll be like, oh, okay, I can do the rest of them. Um, there's some training and some instructions you can print out. They're right there on the screen. Once again, you'll get the slides after this, so you'll be able to grab them. Um, and if you're still not sure, give us a call. We'll walk you through one. They're really pretty straightforward after that. Um, ooh, next. I am so happy with these BI reports. On your checklist, you'll still have some reports that are going to drive you to running standard reports out of the web. Some of those standard reports have been replaced. Amy? Yes. Before we get too far into BI mm -hmm. reports, we have a question about the import tool. Uh, yes. One of our viewers does not see that import tool and asks, how can they turn it on? Okay. So when the import tool was rolled out, it was not automatically turned on. So whoever has the ability to add things to uh, security roles can go out to Integration Studio and turn on the import tool. Great, thank you. Okay. okay, so BI reports. Um, for example, one of the reports that All2Pro tells you to run is your, you're looking for missing tax ID numbers or ones that are marked applied for. In the standard report, that what, what that means is you're running all of your tax IDs and you're going through them looking for things that say missing or applied for. If you've got three locations in Tennessee, that's a really short report. If you've got 600 locations across 23 component companies and you're in all but two states of the union, which means you've got Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Kentucky local taxes, that's a lot of report. This BI report for missing or applied for tax ID numbers only gives you missing or applied for tax ID numbers. So it's a much, hopefully, a much shorter list. Um, the, let's see, other one, multiple worksite locations miss, missing their ID. If you have to do multiple worksite reporting, you can put that worksite reporting ID in the, in the, uh, in AltiPro and run the reports there, which is amazing. I didn't know that when I was doing these reports. This will give you only those locations that are missing IDs. Once again, the standard report will give you everything. Excuse me, this report will tell you who's missing, so you can just fix the ones that are missing. Um, the next one, deductions and deduction ca categories. This is, again, this is two reports they have you run. If you're a pretty stable company you've set up and you haven't made any changes to your deductions in two years, you don't really need to worry about this report, although it's nice to run it. But if you're a dynamic company, you're constantly changing benefits, you're adding deductions, you're turning off deductions, you're realizing your deductions were set up wrong. In 
The standard reports you run, run report to look at the, the tax category, and you run another report to tell you whether or not that deduction is gonna report on the W-2. This report combines it all in one. Fabulous. Um, so it tells you what the tax category is for your, your deduction so you can review them and make sure they're okay. This is one of those reports, yes, you wanna run it now because you've got enough time left in the year to fix if you had something wrong all year. You also wanna run this maybe every month or every quarter so you can catch these things earlier. Um, especially if you know the people setting up the deductions are not necessarily the people who know how they should be set up. This is a fabulous report. I love this one. Um, earnings and earning report categories. So once again, like the deductions, the standard report is two different reports. You have to look at them both. This combines them. It tells you the tax category. It tells you if it, re if it reports separately in box 14 on the W-2, tells you if the earning code is exempt from federal income tax or from Medicare. Fabulous report, once again, so much nicer to have it all on one spreadsheet and then two reports. Um, and then at the bottom, you'll see the W-2 box 12 DD. This is for the employee, which deduction code, how much dollar, what dollar amount is gonna show up in box 12 DD. Actually box 12 coded is DD. Previously, you ran a report for all deductions and had to filter through, visually filter through each one to make sure Bob was okay and Ted was okay. This is only gonna give you deductions that are going in that box. Much shorter list. This is so much easier. I love this. Um, the last one I have is some PTO reports. Most companies do their resets at year end. So this top report here, um, if your accrued through date or your rollover date are in the future, then it's not gonna happen. Sometimes when you're manually, manually adding PTO to employees' records, I've seen people go, oh, the rollover date, well, they're gonna roll over in January, so I'm gonna put January 2019. No, this, when was the last time it rolled over? January 2018 would be a good date, not 2019. So this is gonna give you those two dates. Um, and I believe this is only gonna give you people who are problems. Once again, filtering by problem employees is so much nicer than running everything. Uh, the bottom one is really nice. It's the fixed date reset pay date. Any PTO plan with a reset on a fixed date, it's gonna tell you what date is in the system and then it's telling you what pay period that's in. Um, so for instance, my last company, we rolled over on 1-1. One -one. They wanted that rollover to show up on my first paycheck in January. So in this case, we would have to use a rollover date of 12-29 for it to show up on that first paycheck in January because 12-29 is in that first paycheck of January. Um, you can go plan by plan and look at them, but this is really nice. You get them all in one place. This is the information you need. And that period start, end date, and pay date thing, they work some magic to get it in there. I used to have to run this report and look at my calendar to figure it out. This is beautiful. Um, so the one thing about these reports, these reports are out there. UltiPro dropped them in their folders, which a lot of people don't normally look at. What I am working on, by the end of next week, all of my clients will have these reports dropped into the Mosaic folder on their business intelligence screen um, so they can have them. And I'll, you know, what I do is I drop them out there and I'll run them to make sure they work. If you are a Mosaic client, go ahead and ask us if we can go out and pull these reports and just drop them there so you don't have to go searching for them. Just put them all in one place. That's where they are. We're all happy. Um, and if you're not a client, then why not? 
we can still help you. Hey, so, Amy. Yes. At what point in the process uh, should people be, can they run these reports at will, or is does the gateway or the checklist recommend a certain time frame? So, so the checklist is going to tell you run it by this day. I'm going to tell you if this has been a pain point for you in the past, if you've had a lot of changes in your earnings and deductions, or if this is really your first year end in UltiPro, run them now. Mm -hmm. Give you a little more time to get caught up on everything. And then once again, run them during the year. Now the fixed date reset for PTO, if you're doing year end, it does, you don't really need to run this in March. Um, but for the rest of them, run them, look at them, just stay on top of things. It's so much easier to fix five or six people every month than to fix, you know, what's that math look out to 60 people in November. Way easier. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. So what can Mosaic do for you? Well, we can do all kinds of things. We can draw little light bulbs on your head. Um, so checklist support. If you have a question on your checklist, what does this mean? Or I ran this report and it doesn't look right. Or how do I run this report? We can help you with that. We're here to help you with all of that. Um, we also will print your W-2s for you. We can print your 1095s. We can't file them. That unfortunately is something we cannot do, but we can print those forms for you so you don't have to tie up a printer doing them. And we can either ship them to you so you can mail them out, hand them out, or we can ship them to your employees and just take that workload entirely off of you and your mailroom. Um, if you need more information about this, please reach out to Mosaic. Um, Laura, do we have an, an email address for them or? We will, we will get that to folks. We'll put that okay. in the, we'll drop that in the chat at the end. But while we're pausing, I do have another question. Yes. Um, should we run reports now because of any issues we had last year on fixing a bunch of checks? Yes. Um, since we're kind of near the end, the one report that I find the most useful when I'm doing a bunch of reversals and adjustments when taxes are involved is the wage detail report, which breaks down an employee's wages for whatever period you're running it. Gross, taxable, exempt, and taxes withheld. So if I'm moving somebody from Ohio to Florida, I'm going to run that report once, then I'm going to make my changes. I'm going to run it again and make sure Ohio's not showing earnings and Florida is. Um, that's a really good report if you've got reversals and adjustments going. And then anything else, any of these items, if they were a pain point last year or you think they might be a pain point this year, run them now. As soon as you've got access to them, run them. Start working on fixing things now. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, all too pro, it's what we do, it's what we love. Um, so, Laura, do we have any more questions or? At this time, we will open it up. I think we've addressed those that have come in um, during the presentation, but if anyone has additional questions, please ping me and we will get those to Amy. Amy referenced also uh, where you can reach out to us for help should you want us to be involved in printing um, 1095s for you. While we don't file for you, we can do the printing and ship to you or your employees, and you can simply go to our website, hit the Contact Us button, and let us know how we can help. Any other questions?
I think we are good then. Uh, oops, I spoke too soon. Um, we've got a couple. What is the process on printing W-2s? Um, so that's going to depend. It Well, for Mosaic printing, for AltiPro printing, you'll generate the files. You'll generate the taxes, which is just like generating your GL at the end of the year, at the end of the pay period. It calculates everything. When everything's good, you'll create a print file. If AltiPro is printing your, file, your W-2s, you'll send the print file to them. If we're doing it, you'll send the print file to us. If you're doing it, you'll send the print file to your printer and keep feeding paper into it. Um, it's actually in the checklist. It's pretty straightforward. It's a lot more straightforward than it was in 2007, the first time I got to do it. And once again, if you run into a hiccup, grab us. That's what we're here for. Um, and I, I actually see we have a question about uh, updating limits. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Recommendations for updating limits such as 401k, for example. So here's, here's the fun thing about it. AltiPro being primarily a payroll system. I, I know you HR people love it for HR, but payroll is the engine that drives it which means dates are the engine that drive it. You can set up, so things like HSA and FSA, where you have to have that limit placed on the deduction code itself. You can make that change effective 1-1 one, one of, in this case, 2019. You cannot make it effective prior to that. And you can't do it until AltiPro has finished doing its R2 update, which if they're not done, they're, gonna, they're really close to finishing. I think they're supposed to finish it this week. You'll know because you will see a 2019 tax category for HSA, FSA, 401k. Um, for 401k and Roth, if you do not need the limits updated, for open enrollment. So if, if you don't run enrollment into 401k and or Roth through open enrollment, when you close the last payroll of 2018 and post it, I believe, the system updates automatically. So it's only an issue if, if if these tax limited benefits are part of open enrollment. If you're just in the 401k plan, the system automatically updates. It updates your tax category from the 2018 to the 2019. It updates the limits um, automatically. AltiPro's got that information. It's just, it's part of the, what they call the R2 update, which is what they're processing through right now. Does that make sense? I believe so. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Anyone else? Any other questions? I believe we are in good shape. I want to remind everyone that later today you will get an email from us with a link to the blog on this same topic, which also appears on our website. And there you will find a recording of this webinar and a copy of the presentation. Wait, we have another question. Um, is there a BI version of the wage detail report, Amy? I do not know, but now I'm going to go out and look. Um, I, I'm thinking not because it's really set up like the W-2 reports in CORE. It's set up as like, Here's employee one, here's employee two, here's employee three, and it doesn't filter well, it doesn't excel well, but I will look to see if there is one. Great. Thank you. Anyone else before we close while we have our subject matter expert at our fingertips? If not, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate oh, it. Actually, we, 
We do? We have one more. Oh, good. <laughs> What's the path to all the year end report? So, if, you're, if you don't have a friendly neighborhood consultant moving them out there, you have to go, it would be team. You know what? I'm going to cheat and look. Um, I tell you what, we will put that in the, when we send everything out, because it's going back to the, like the very beginning of the red crumb trail in BI and then going out from there. So I will make sure that's included in the, uh, in the data that we send out after this. As soon as I'm done with this report, I'll go look it up. Great. Thank you, Amy. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to walk through our thank yous and closing slowly because I don't want to stop anyone who may have another question, but I believe we are in good shape and we've answered all the questions that have come in. Um, I want to remind you all when we do send the email with the recap and the link to the blog, if there were others at your company who were not able to join us today, please feel free to share with them as well. Um, and if folks have questions, uh, they are welcome to contact their Mosaic consultant and we will find an answer for you. Thanks everybody. <laughs>